Good morning, folks. This is the late June update of our straw bale gardening collaboration. I'm on the second bed of straw bales for our garden this summer. I'll be showing you the rest of the straw bale garden here in a minute. But first, we'll go over these bales, which I've just finished conditioning. The straw bales are set up in a row of two. So there's three bales, and next to it, another three bales. I've just poked down about an inch and the straw is still very, very damp. It's time to water it again. In fact, it was time to water it yesterday, but I needed the garden hose for some other jobs. Now we're getting ready to go on an extended trip for Irene's business. I've been doing some trenching. A friend of mine, Jim, at Green Dream Project, I'll put a link to their channel over here. He's been doing some digging as well. He needs to dig about a 30 foot trench. I was in the process of building this irrigation trench when I saw his video and I thought to myself, well, I think I'm probably going to be doing about 30 feet as well. So I went ahead and measured it. I actually need to dig 36 feet of trench. Since we're going to be gone for an extended period of time, I needed to make sure that there was irrigation set up for the second bed. We're having some awesome luck with a bunch of our flowers this year. First, the iris came up and bloomed great. Now, we're finally having hollyhocks that are surviving the gophers. Some things haven't done so well. The bok choy that we put out here in the soil garden just isn't doing. One of the problems is it's been eaten by pests. The first straw bale bed is doing great. The tomatoes are growing like crazy. Our peppers are doing all right. We have a little bit of an issue with some water in a couple of spots, but that will resolve itself here shortly. Our one tomato plant here isn't getting enough water. We'll need to add another dripper here. We'll fine tune the water in this bed. We've had a few questions about the row cover over the top of this bed. The reason for it's quite simple. We need to provide a little shape to these tomato plants. Yeah, I know, tomatoes are supposed to be able to grow in full sun, but full sun here is really, is really too strong. We have some blossoms on some of these plants. I think we're gonna have some reasonable tomato harvest this year. I just hope we're here for it. Putting another drip emitter in is easy. Irene just cuts the line, inserts a new drip emitter, <laughs> and then puts it back in line. Voila, instant additional water. Irene is the drip irrigation technician for our garden. She's awesome at it. That one? Yes. It's fine. It's 
Oh, I did. <laughs> yeah, that was fine. Irene's going to add additional emitters for the two pepper plants here on the end. But that means that she's probably going to be out of inline drip emitters. Be close <laughs> so we'll need to buy some more. Adding in the inline drip emitter is pretty easy. In addition to adding the inline drip emitters, we're also going to increase the time of the drip emitters running. The straw bales need a little more water than what it's getting right now. We have an awful lot of wind and that wind dries things out. We'll be gone for an extended period of time, so I think we'd rather err on the side of putting too much water into the bales, because it'll drain out, than letting it get dry and killing the plants. Mm -hmm. 